There are two options when deciding to install a bat house. You can purchase one that is already made or use free designs like the one on Bat Conservation International's website to create your own. To get the full bang for your buck, building your own is the best way to go. Today, we'll be using the hotter temperature modifications of the single chamber bat house plan from BCI to build our own bat house. This model, which will actually build two houses using all of the materials, will cost about $100 to build. Note that an extra furring strip is needed to build two houses with these materials. If you don't want to build two, you don't have to. Adjust the materials list accordingly. To build this model, you will need water-based exterior grade paint and primer, water-based exterior grade stain, paintable latex caulk, exterior screws, paint brushes and paint trays, a caulking gun, knife or flat screwdriver to make horizontal grooves, a power drill with a bit that is compatible with the screws, safety goggles to protect your eyes when sanding and cutting wood, a saw to cut the wood, a tape measure or yardstick to measure the wood, a sheet of plywood, two furring strips, unless you want to make two houses then three furring strips are required, sandpaper, and a sock or rag to apply the stain. After acquiring your materials, you will need to make the cuts for your bat house design. This is where the modifications will be incorporated. The modifications we chose allow a cooler temperature gradient to reduce the risk of the bats overheating. Make sure you, you are using exterior grade plywood that is not pressure treated. Pressure treated wood is toxic to bats. Once cut, the wood is ready to assemble. Cut horizontal grooves into the largest piece of plywood. These grooves allow easy landing and roosting areas for the bats to grip. Make sure the grooves are deep enough, around 1 16th of an inch. Once the grooves have been made, sand the sharp edges of the grooves and the rest of the wood, but don't sand your grooves entirely out. Using a sock, apply the dark stain in an even coat across the interior areas of the bat house. The wood cannot be wet to apply the stain and needs adequate time to dry. Once the stain has dried, apply caulking on the areas where you will attach the furring strips and attach the furring strips using screws. When cutting the opening to the caulking tube, make sure the hole is small. This will limit excess of caulking. The easiest way to attach the furring strips would be to insert the screws from the back in order to make sure that there are not screws poking through. Place one screw every four to six inches, making sure to not place screws too close to the edge of the wood or it may split. Once the furring strips are attached, apply caulking to the furring strips where you will apply the front walls of the bat house. Place the larger of the two boards on the top and allow a half inch vent and place the second piece of plywood on the bottom. Attach the board to the house with screws every four to six inches. After the caulking has dried, you can paint the exterior. Make sure your bat house is painted the correct color for the area you'll be placing the bat house. To determine the correct color to paint a bat house, look at the average daily high temperatures in July for your area. Colors that are too dark will make the bat house get too hot, while colors that are too light won't get warm enough for the bats. For East Texas, the recommended color is a darker medium shade of paint. For Central Texas, the paint should be a medium to light shade. The area where our houses will be installed has an average July high temperature of less than 95 degrees, so we painted our houses dark gray.